Martin, tell us how your association with the uh, the Atlantics came about. Okay, with the Atlantics, it all came about when I met Bosco Bosanac, who was the bass player in the band. Um, he was a bass player who formed the band with Peter the drummer back in 1959, I think. I met Bosco in the late 90s, and uh, a friend of mine gave Bosco a cassette tape of five or six songs that I had just been messing around with at home in the, in the Atlantics or surf instrumental style. And Bosco heard the songs, liked them obviously, and went to the other guys and said, look, I think I found a guy um, who could fit into our band and um, maybe we should see if we can get the Atlantics up and running again. There's been a lot of interest in the band. And um, so I, the short story is they gave me a call and said, would you be up for it? And I said, yeah, sure. So we basically got together, hit it off really well, got on like we know each other forever, and um, just started playing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's been going ever since. The perception is, uh, uh, you know, that uh, you've had a lot to do with the, uh, the the revival of the band, and your your playing. Yeah, I think when I came along, um, they had a really strong back catalogue, a huge back catalogue of songs. They hadn't recorded seriously since 1970. So. Um, when I came along, all of a sudden it was getting serious again, and also I had a, a collection of songs. And um, they went through the songs, and basically we did an album called Fly the Surf Guitar. And I think there's 14 of my tracks on there, and they basically went through and just chose these songs we made in the album. And that's how it all came about, repertoire, I think. Mm -hmm. So my, my intention at the time was, like, I liked the, playing those, that style of music, just at home. And I, I, I thought, well, this a new repertoire, so I started writing songs in that style so I could play them. Mm -hmm. and that's how it started. Mm -hmm. Anyone that might be watching that may not know who the Atlantics were, they're probably the first Australian band to have an international hit. Well, they had a Australian hit in 1963 with Bombora, and Bombora was number one for eight weeks. Now, the guys were still teenagers at the time, and that's huge by any, any standard. And Bombora is one of those songs everyone knows when they hear it. It's on. And a lot of people don't realise it's Australian. Plus, they did have the overseas success. The big thing was people didn't realise the Atlantic for Australia. Western Australia and been playing in bands since I was 14. I moved to Sydney in 1989 and uh, been playing all sorts of bands. I've done the punk bands, I've done the um, new wave bands, I've done done them all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Including Dave Warner? Including Dave Warner from the suburbs. Mm -hmm. Great band, great songs, great, great ideas. Mm -hmm. And you wrote with him? Uh, yes, we've written many songs together, mm -hmm. yeah. Dave um, is very, very um, prolific when it comes to songwriting. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. With your, um, with with the sound that you get with the uh, the Atlantics. Yes. It's the equipment, isn't it? I think that's a big part of it. You've got to have the concept in your head of what you want to achieve, but having the right equipment, and the right gear to get that sound, um, really does make a difference. What is the right gear? Um, for me, with the Atlantics, <coughs> well, we prefer Vox amps, Vox AC30s. We use mostly on our recordings. Occasionally we use an old Fender. Bombora was actually re recorded on a 1961 Bandmaster with one 12 inch speaker in it. Uh, but after that, the band got endorsed by Vox, so the band's been using Vox ever since. A nice valve amp, Vox amps are great. And the old Stratocasters, got a couple here. Um, we use like, that's a 61 Stratocaster, it's a 63 Stratocaster. They have a sound, also you put you know, good gauge strings on there and it's clear Pretty sound. Huge. Well, medium to heavy, yeah. Like what? Don't get to, well, Jim, who plays the other guitar in the band, he's, I think he's still using 13 for his um, high E string. Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't tune down a semitone, we, still con <laughs> we tune concert. And he's got a wow and G string on there, I know that, and it's just like, yeah, but it's got the sound. But this one's only got, these got 11 to 50. A bit more realistic, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we use on those ones. But yeah, just a good, good signal pass. Also, um, uh, either delay units or echo units, as they were then, or reverb tanks. 
um, we have a couple of Fender reverb tanks from the early 60s which give that surf sound. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, also, the Atlantics used to use clamped echolets. I think the band only has one left that works. We don't use them anymore because they're just too old and fragile and too many noises that go with them. With recording technology today, you've got, you've got to have a quiet amp, otherwise it picks up everything. So you, in the old days you get away with it, but not now. Mm -hmm. So we use um, whatever's around, maybe even Boss pedals or um, those Roland uh, triple five echoes or whatever, we sometimes use those. Mm -mm -mm. When, I, when I hear the stuff though, it, it, it's not completely clean. Like you would think that it would be a clean sound, but mm. it's not. There, there's some grunge there. Yeah, you, you get the amps, so they're just working. It's a bit like um, ACDC. You think they're very distorted, the guitar sounds, but they're actually quite clean. But it's the same thing. They've got that edge on their sounds. We turn our amps up to a volume where the amps are just working hard, and you can get the uh, harmonic overtones right. without the squashing the sound. We, we, once you get the amps too loud, they start sometimes compressing, mm -hmm. and that's not good for what we do. Right. We need the open sound. So you've got a couple of guitars here, can, can you talk them through for us? What sure. Show us. Um, we'll start off with this white Stratocaster here. This is a 1961 Stratocaster. It's um, got this slab board up there. You can see it down there too. It's all original with a three-way switch. Um, I just find this guitar particularly has a darker sound than most Strats. It's just reasonably dark. And when you record with it, it just naturally sticks in a mix. It's just got a perfect balance. It's just a... Oops, hasn't been tuned for a while. It's, um... I, I just find I use this a heck of a lot for recording in the studio and live. Um, so this is a 1961. Um, had it for many years. You just don't sit them around anymore. There's another one here that I, I use a lot as well. This is a 1963. It's a candy apple red. In colour, it's a nice. It's a lot brighter in sound. This one. Yeah, you can hear it. Yeah, it sounds bright, and when you play, it sounds more lively. Um, I occasionally use this if I want um, a happier sound, for want of a better word. And it's, it's yes, it's really good. It's, it's a fun guitar. It's got fun when you play mm -hmm. it. So that's really good. It's got the, still got the three-way little um, switch in there and stuff. <coughs> Finishes get a bit fragile as they get older. That's an original candy apple. Crack a little bit, but yeah. It's a good solid guitar otherwise. Trying not to drop that one too much. 